so today's video is going to be just a little bit different. Just, 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 just a little bit. <laughs> so I know many of you are fans of my sketchbook tours, and so I thought that today I would show you the supplies that I use for my sketchbooks, and then also the process that I use to kind of fill in different pages, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I know a lot of people have been asking me about like supplies that I use, and a little bit of a disclaimer, this isn't a video about the supplies that I use to make more finished illustrations, because that stuff can be its own video. The stuff in this video is just going to be stuff that I keep in my pencil case, and then other stuff like this and these, which are kind of peeking out there, <laughs> that I use in my sketchbook to kind of add a little bit of pizzazz. <laughs> and then once I show all of my supplies, we're going to be filling in the page of my sketchbook, which is why this is here. <laughs> In case anybody is curious, I'll just get this out of the way right now. This is a Strathmore Vision mixed media sketchbook. So if you're interested in having this sketchbook, why is my dog whining? Let's get to it. Now the stuff that I use most is the stuff that is in this little pencil case here. I got this pencil case at Kmart, I think? <laughs> I don't even remember. But yeah, I bought it for like $5. I know you can find a similar one on Amazon. I don't know the brand, I am so sorry. So let's just get into this, shall we? Boom! <laughs> so right off the bat, the first thing that I have is this pencil. I don't know what brand it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, my sister bought this for me. I think it's Paper Mate, but it's one of those fancy ones and the lead inside is 0.5 millimeters. It's a pencil. <laughs> this pen is one of my favorite pens I've ever used. Not even just for sketching, but for writing in general. It is the Precise V5 pen from Pilot. It's a wonderful pen. It's very, very juicy. The nib is like that. Does anyone else test their like pens and stuff on their fingers? I know it seems more convenient than getting a sheet of paper in my opinion. These are a little bit more on the pricey end. So they're not exactly a budget option, but if you stumble across them and you have the extra money, I would highly recommend using them. Now, even though the last pen is my favorite, these are actually the pens that I use the most. <laughs> these are the Bic Ultra Round Stick Grip. They're very nice. I have them in these two colors, and then I have a black one in here somewhere. These are very nice for sketching. These can actually work pretty well with watercolor. They, they're actually like kind of waterproof, which I wasn't expecting because most cheap ballpoint pens aren't, but these are very nice for sketching. They're not as juicy as this one, so when you're sketching you can get more like different tones depending on how heavy or how light you're using the pencil. Should I just call these pencils? They're pens. I'm smart. I don't really use this all too much. You guys should know what this is. It's a Sharpie. <laughs> yeah, I don't use it super often, but it's just in case I need like a larger black area filled or something that's this size. These are some extra microns that I had laying around. I don't really use these ones for lining, but I have a brush pen which came in a set of three. It has a blue one and a, which are, they're actually sitting right next to me. Where are they? These ones. These ones I actually do use for lining. It's a blue brush pen and then a red brush pen. I'll sometimes use the black, but I have other black brush pens that I use more than this, which is why this is in my pencil case. And then this one's just a 01 Micron. Kind of peeking out the side here is this Topps ruler. <laughs> I don't know where Topps is in the country. They had one in New York and they don't have one in Florida. So it might just be a New York thing. It could be just a general northern thing, but this is just a little six inch ruler that I found in my couch cushions and I took it because I wanted a six inch ruler to keep in my pencil case. Something that you've probably seen me use quite a bit in my videos is this kneaded eraser. I completely forgot the brand because I'm horrible. <laughs> I think it's Faber-Castell, but I bought it for like about a dollar at Michael's. Kneaded erasers are very lovely. I could recommend them over any other eraser. This is a Pigma brush pen. This one is in the double B, but big, bold, bird butt. <laughs> I'm a child. Anyways, it's that big. 
And this is something else that I use to fill in larger black areas. And the reason I have a piece of tape here is because I bought another set. Like I have two and one of them I use for lining and then the other one I have just as like backups. But I don't use this one a lot and so I have it in here. Here's that other uh, Bic stick grip pen that I was talking about. These are liners that I use mostly in my sketchbook, but I do use them every now and again as liners in a finished illustration. These are the Staedtler pigment liners. They come in various sizes. Also, the case can stand up. <laughs> I could probably have more room in my pencil case if I just took them out of the case, but I actually use the case because it stands up like that, and it's very nice when I'm drawing, so I can just be like, oh, look. Yeah, I bought these just because they were cheap and I wanted some liners because I actually like sketching with liners every now and again and I wanted to have some liners to practice like doing my line art with that aren't like hella expensive like my Copic liners so whenever I want to practice with line art in my sketchbook it's usually this. Underneath everything else I have these post-it notes. I have ones in these size and a couple different colors and then I have these taller ones and also a couple different colors. <laughs> I use these mostly for when I like make a mistake in my art. So if I draw a face that I don't think is very nice, I usually just take a post-it note, stick it over there, and then I draw over it and try again. Also, it's something that like adds more te like different textures to your sketchbook because it's a different like color and a little bit of a different texture and a different size than the paper that you're using in your sketchbook, I'll bet. Also, it's something that kind of encourages you to work on a drawing that you don't like a little bit more because when you work on a drawing that you don't like, you're just learning how to improve your art a little bit more. Moving on to this pocket. Uh, the first thing are these highlighters. I have no idea how much they cost because my mom bought them for me, but they are big bright liners. These I use mostly to add like borders and shapes in my sketchbooks because if you've ever seen my sketchbooks, sometimes behind a character there will be like a rectangle or something and that's just to add more like, it's to draw your eye. Oh, this is a random. <laughs> this isn't the same brand. That's just something that I do to kind of draw your eye to a specific part of the sketchbook so then that way I can like direct your eye towards the drawings that I like more. This is a pen that I got from Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's just a thin felt tip red pen that's nice to sketch with and write with. This is actually the pen that I use to plan out the scripts for my videos, so there's a fun fact. <laughs> Lastly, I have these babies, which they're nothing fancy. I literally bought these at Target for 50 cents. <laughs> this black isn't closed all the way. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I struggle with closing a marker for like five minutes. Ah, there we go. I use these for a bunch of different stuff. I use them sometimes for sketching because, I don't know, they just add, they add a lot more color and they're just really fun to sketch with because they're like bright and the nib is a lot more thick than just like a regular pen. So they're very nice and sometimes I use them to just add blocks of colors like the same way I use the highlighters or I'll use them to color in certain parts of a character or something that I draw. So yeah, that's it for my pencil case. I have some other supplies, which I'll show you in a minute, that aren't in my pencil case that I do use quite a bit. But these are usually like my main go-to sketchbook supplies. When I was in school, these are the supplies that I would always bring with me. So these are the supplies that I can recommend the most because they're what I've had the most experience with and you can do some pretty nice stuff with just these simple supplies. Kind of similar to the post-it notes, I have these, which are index cards. Sometimes they're white and then sometimes they're colorful. I use them the same way that I use index, uh, but not index cards. These are the index cards. The same way that I use the post-its, like I was saying. If I mess it up, I just tape over it and then I draw on these. These are Prismacolor color pencils. I have no idea how much these cost because this was a gift from my mom because she had someone at work who did art but never used these, so she snagged them for me. I use these for a variety of different stuff. Sometimes I'll sketch in them. They're actually really nice to sketch with. 
These are actually watercolor pencils, so I could use them as watercolors, but I don't. <laughs> I also use them in finished illustrations that I talked about in my Meet the Artist video. One thing that I also keep handy is this pencil sharpener. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's nothing fancy at all. It's one of those ones where it opens up like this and then you have all the shavings in there. Two supplies that I've been using a lot lately are these guys. <laughs> These ones are the Tombow brush pens or brush markers, whatever you want to call them. I got a bunch of different sets for Christmas. They're fairly inexpensive and I think that the colors are, yes. I use them both for sketching because this end is more of like a, that. <laughs> and then the other side is a brush nib. I think these are actually what I'm going to end up using to sketch because I used them on the page before this. And I like to have some sort of um, consistency between like page spreads. And then these are another thing that I've been absolutely in love with. These are some Posca paint markers. I got them in the medium size tip. I don't know how many millimeters or whatever it is, but it's the medium size tip. And I love using these for sketching, which is definitely not their intended purpose. But they're so brightly colored and they're just so fun to use and they layer on top of each other so well. These are a, definitely a favorite of mine. <laughs> so yeah, that's the general art supplies that I use for my sketchbook. And so now, let's get to filling out a page. <laughs> so if you've seen any of my sketchbook tour videos, you know that what I draw mostly is my OCs. <laughs> I just love designing characters, and so I usually end up with way too many than I know what to do with, so. I would also highly recommend, if you don't have an OC, designing one, because designing an OC can really help with filling out a sketchbook. I don't know if I'd be able to have even filled in half of the amount of sketchbooks that I have if I didn't have my OCs. So, now we art. Hmm. Um... I wanted to give him a mustache, but it's not showing up. Anyway, all right, the page before this, if I can actually open my sketchbook, it looks like this, in case you're wondering. Here's a sneak peek to my sketchbook tour. And so I wanted to continue drawing characters from this universe on this page. Normally I try and lay out the page in my head a little bit before I actually draw anything because then that helps with making your page look not like a dumpster fire. Also by the way, if these drawings don't look the best, this is literally the first thing that I've drawn today. I'm filming this at like 9.30 in the morning, so. I think Cairo the one that I'm drawing now. He's a character that I think a lot of you guys will like once I get around to introducing him. He's a sweet boy. I think I might have made his head a little bit too big. That's all right. That's what the post-it notes are for. I need to come up with more creative poses because I feel like I draw way too many people with just their hand on their hip. Look at this, you get to see the post-it note in action. <laughs> Perfect. Oh boy, now I have to work backwards. That's gonna be fun. Let's see. See, unlike the post-it notes, the index cards aren't transparent, so you have to do a lot more guessing with the index cards than you do with the post-it notes. I think I need to work on drawing different body types more. I feel like a lot of my characters have the same body type, except for like Mabel. Oh, I just got a cute idea. But for that to work, I need to draw. Sawyer. My soybean. I love Sawyer because he's emo and has orange hair. For my characters that have unnatural hair colors, I haven't decided if it's going to be like an anime universe where that's just their natural hair color or if it's going to be dyed. Cause Sawyer has orange hair and then Andy has blue hair. I'm going to draw one of my favorite characters. She's a small child. She's actually Sawyer's baby cousin. 
debated about whether or not the more minor characters of their story are gonna have their own videos. Because, like, more minor characters include the character that I'm drawing now, and then, like, Mabel's older brother, and then there's another character who I don't actually draw very much, so, like, pretty much nobody is going to know her, but she has an older sister who's a more minor character. And I don't know if they're gonna get their own videos. I'm still, like, debating on that. I could, like, instead of having them each have their own video, they could have, like, a single video talking about, like, all the minor characters. My dog just bit my foot. <laughs> How do children work? That arm is too long. God damn it. Okay, well, I'll fix that later. <laughs> I just realized I didn't give Sawyer Cairo arms. It's fine, they'll have their arms later. I really need to work on front views. I feel like front views are always like... Ow, my knee. I feel like every time I draw Sawyer's hair, it changes a little bit. It's fine, I guess it'd just be like that. Sawyer is one of those characters where it's like, he has such a god-awful life and it's like you know i could have easily not done that to him but i did and i'm not going to change it <laughs> do you see what happened here what happened there oh my god i talked about this on instagram but the other day i had a dream where like i you know giovanni from pokemon yeah i was fighting him but like we were fighting with pokemon cards and then he also had like five other people fighting with him, so it was like a five against one type of thing. But then it's like, we are fighting over the ring from Lord of the Rings. Which I don't, I've never seen Lord of the Rings or anything of the sort. So I don't know why, but it was there. <laughs> also, in case you're wondering, yes, I did win. So I, I don't know about you guys, but I have really, really weird dreams. <laughs> one time. This is like my go-to like dream story whenever I talk about my weird dreams. Do you guys know Gabriel Iglesias, like the stand-up comedian? Yeah, I had a dream where he was my uncle <laughs> and we were at Walmart and there's this lady who recognized him. And so she kept on like trying to talk to him. We kept on calling her shirtless lady, even though she wasn't shirtless. She was wearing like a like a crop top that was purple and then like a sun hat. <laughs> but we kept on calling her shirtless lady and she kept on trying to like talk to him and at first it was super chill, but then like eventually she started getting like kind of stalkery-ish and she was like following us around in the Walmart. And then she kept on trying to talk to us and so Gabriel by the way, I kept on calling him Uncle Jesse. <laughs> As in like from Full House. I don't know why. I think that was when my sister was really into Full House, but Uncle Jesse <laughs> was just like, sorry, I gotta take my mom to the hospital, which was his way of being like, we're just going to leave. But then like we, we left the Walmart and then we went to his car. But then like, as we were driving away, she got in her car and she was following us. And we were driving on the highway for like three hours, which no one was on the highway, by the way, it was just us. And we were driving there for like three hours and she was just stalking us. And then like, I called the police and was like, hey, there's this fucking lady stalking us. Can you like maybe come do something about this? And then the police was like, nope, that was fun. And then all of a sudden she shoots Gabriel Iglesias. And then I got out of the car and I ran because I didn't know what else to do because this lady with a gun just shot my uncle Jesse. And so then I, we happened to be near this police station. So I ran to the police station, which looking back now, I don't know why, because when I called the police, they were literally zero help. But then like I was running in this building, which from the outside, it looked gigantic. When I got into the inside, it was like really like narrow and like not great. <laughs> and then I was running trying to find like anyone who could help. I did find a cop, but for some reason I was afraid of him and I ran away. 
And then I had a mental breakdown in this room that I locked myself in. And then I woke up. This other time, I had this dream where when I was younger, I think I was like, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 11 or something. But I had a dream where my school had a field trip to go see Disney on Ice. And so we went to Disney on Ice and then for some reason, like swimming goggles worked as like binoculars <laughs> but also in this dream i was terrified of swimming goggles i don't know why but you know <laughs> whatever and then i remember vividly this part in my dream where like all of my classmates were just staring at me wearing swimming goggles which i mean to be fair even if you don't have a fear of swimming goggles i feel as though that would be a very disturbing scene to look at and so i did that and then I got scared, so I ran away, <laughs> and then I locked myself in a room, and then it was dark, so I turned the light on in the room, and just lined up on the walls and like the ceilings was just swimming goggle after swimming goggle. So that was the second dream I'm telling you about where it ended with me having a mental breakdown. Okay, the last dream I'm gonna tell you guys about. When I was around the same age, maybe a little bit older, I feel like this arm looks weird. Am I gonna fix it? No, but I was around the same age as the last one. So like small child-ish age. I fell asleep hungry. And so my dream that night was I was in the sky and it was like sunny, but then there was like clouds, not like in a bad way. It's just like there are like a lot of white and fluffy clouds. Yeah, her arms definitely look weird. Oh well. I really do be like that. There's like a bunch of clouds and I was like in the sky and then I walk, I float up to these like other clouds and then they like part, like they're just like whoosh. And then it's like just floating. There's this plate <laughs> of like roasted chicken <laughs> and it's like sparkling and like the rays of sun are like coming through the clouds in that like very scenic way. I should have done some warm up sketches before filming this video. These drawings are, rough and stiff and bad they're just all bad i was gonna be like this arm looks weird but it's like all of it looks weird <laughs> i like kennedy's face though a little cutie i don't know what to do with this other arm so it's just gonna be hanging out here man i have so many like unused sketchbooks it's kind of a problem <laughs> like i already had a bunch and then christmas came and i got some but then it's like I went to Barnes & Noble recently, where I bought another one. <laughs> also, speaking of Barnes & Noble, shout out to that lady who I bonded with over fairy tale at the cash register. I doubt you're watching this, but if you are, you're cool. I was buying some fairy tale books, and the lady who was checking me out was talking to me about them, and she's like, before working here, I didn't even know that they had spinoffs. So, we were bonding over that. <laughs> I don't know her name, but she was cool. And then also the lady next to her and the, the like the other cash register lady said that she loves Loxus, so I know I can trust her with my life. It's actually kind of hard drawing Cairo because he's taller than Sawyer, but he's like a year younger than he is, and so it's hard for me to like draw him and have him look his age, but also like keep it consistent with his height. I also have that same problem with Luca, only like a little bit different because like most of the characters in this story are, not most, but like Andy and then Mabel and Sawyer are 17 and then Luca and Rory are 18 and then Cairo is 16. And then like Luca is just the tallest out of all of them. He's even six foot. And so it's hard to like not make him look like an older adult because of how tall he is. <laughs> and so I have to draw him with a face that's actually like a little bit younger than 18. So then that way it like kind of balances each other out and he actually looks like he's supposed to be in high school. <laughs> Seriously, should have done some warm-up sketches. He definitely looks way too old here. <laughs> it turned out a little bit more gay than I intended. <laughs> we don't need a third one of they're not gay. 
I've definitely given up on this drawing. <laughs> I'm just gonna scribble for the rest of it. Because I... You guys wanna see my dog? Zola, come here! Sweetest of girls right here. Let me rub your belly, okay? Or you can lick the table, that's fine. A sweet girl. By the way, Mabel's older brother is Cass. I don't know if that's ever been stated in this video, but... That's who he is! He's like an adult, he's like 23, so... Look, here's another guy with long hair. I mean for Cass to turn out as attractive as he is. <laughs> but then after I design him, and like after drawing him for a while, I'm just like, wow, he's kinda hot. Facial hair. Hair. Boom. Facial hair. I forgot that I'm supposed to be talking. <laughs> For the third and last time, I really should have done some warm up sketches. Here's a little fact about Cass. I literally made him because I wanted to get better at drawing more masculine characters because. I don't draw masculinity very well. That's his wrong nose, that's not his nose, but whatever, it really be like that. So me and my sister have been playing the new Pokemon game. I've made a separate like account on my Switch that I got for Christmas, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> and then, so I have like one where it's like for me and then one where it's like me and my sister, so then that way I can enjoy the game and then also play with her without like messing up my save file in any way. But her, I think her new favorite Pokemon is Clefairy <laughs> because we caught one and we named it Mavis after Mavis from Fairy Tail. And she's in love with her. <laughs> I actually like the way this sketch turned out. I mean, the nose is still not his nose, <laughs> but other than that, I quite like it. It's had a bit of shading to it. Yo, one topic that just kind of randomly popped in my head is art teachers. <laughs> Do you guys have cool art teachers? Because I had the dopest art teachers ever. <laughs> my first year of high school, I had a different art teacher, but then like my, all, all my other years of high school, I had this one art teacher, which I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say her name, Let's call her, what's the lady from the Magic School bus, Miss Frizzle? Let's call her Miss Frizzle. <laughs> so I loved Miss Frizzle so much. She's literally my art mom. And then my junior and senior year of high school, I also had another one, um, art teacher who was my, we had this Photoshop class and then this animation class and he was that one. Let's call him Mr. Dope. <laughs> And so Miss Frizzle was like the like the traditional art teacher and then Mr. Dope was like the digital art teacher. And they were literally like the art parents. It was the greatest thing ever. And one time my one friend, she spent a lot of time in the art room and we were having this like Christmas party before Christmas break color do I want to use? And like when they were in there, Miss Frizzle was talking to Mr. Dope on the phone and was just like, yeah, the kids want to see both of us for the holidays. And it's like, they're literally the art parents. <laughs> they're the best. So Miss Frizzle or Mr. Dope, if either of you guys are watching this, I love you and I miss you. <laughs> okay. The last characters for this little group. These are two characters that I really should draw more because they're so sweet. I'm always bouncing back and forth between like wanting to have more realistic proportions, but then also it's like I love drawing like more cartoony stuff. Since neither of these characters have been seen, she is the taller one, she's going to be a main character in their story. And then this shorter girl who is her sister, she is not going to be a main character in the story. And then Kennedy, Quinn, and Cass are also going to be like more minor characters in the story. 
going back to like the teacher subject, I actually had like my later years of high school, I actually had a lot of cool teachers. Which is cool because like backstory about my gender time. <laughs> Um, the first time I came out to anybody was my sophomore year of high school. Yeah, my sophomore year was like the middle to end of my sophomore year. And then the first year that I was out to like people at school, like teachers and stuff, was my junior year of high school. And so it's cool that I had a lot of like teachers and stuff and I didn't have a lot of I think the only like teacher that I had in the previous year was Miss Frizzle that I talked about earlier, my art teacher. But she's super lovely and supportive. And I think that like, I'm honestly so lucky to have had the high school experience that I've had while being trans because I know that there are a lot of schools that like aren't supportive with that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to say that bullying didn't exist at our school because it definitely did, but it's like, it was much less of an issue than I feel like it is at other schools, which I am incredibly blessed and thankful for. Because like, if I was in a high school that was very unsupportive and like was full of bullying and stuff, it would have been like a lot more difficult. Like I barely made it out of high school as it is. And so I think that like, if I was dealing with like bullying or anything, it would have made that experience infinitely more difficult. So anybody who's going through something like that where you have to deal with like bullying or an unsupportive like high school or anything, I'm so sorry that you have to deal with that and you definitely don't deserve it. But it's important to keep in mind that even if it doesn't feel like it, things will get better. Whether that means people in your school will become more supportive or you just have to wait it out until you leave school. <laughs> Either way, it's going to get better, I promise you. And I know that like, not a lot of LGBT youth were as lucky as I am. And a lot of them do have to deal with like, bullying and stuff. And I've definitely had to like, deal with some stuff because of my gender. It's not like everything was all easy. And it's not that everyone like, accepted like, my gender, but like, you could definitely tell when there was a teacher who wasn't all about it. <laughs> but they never said anything, like, to my face or anything, which was good. But yeah, if you are dealing with anything like that, you'll always find someone who is accepting of you and supportive of you. Whether that's, like, people at school or your family or just some people on the internet, you'll always find someone who has your back. That's one thing that I'm really happy to like have this YouTube channel for because I know a lot of you are young, a lot of you are artists, and a lot of you are trans or otherwise a part of the LGBT community. And it makes me really happy to like kind of have a community, not only for like for me, so then I know I'm not alone, but also for you guys so you can find people who are similar to you. This got a little deep. <laughs> okay, let's see. What colors did I use on the other page? So I definitely want to use this color over here. So kind of my process, because I've kind of been ignoring that. <laughs> I draw all of the pictures first, and then that's when I go in and add like the different shapes and borders and stuff. I remember Miss Frizzle used to always love my sketchbooks. <laughs> if only she could see me now. Let's add some shapes in this negative space. This is the most exciting part of this YouTube video. So yeah, this is pretty much my process for filling in sketchbooks. It's not the exact same thing every time because, you know, the more I draw and the more I learn, the more different my process is going to become. But yeah, I don't want anyone to think that this is like the way to fill in sketchbooks because it's definitely not. Everybody's sketchbook is and should be unique to them as a person. So my sketchbook looks different from somebody else's sketchbook. And art would be boring if everyone's sketchbook looked the exact same. You know, just use this to spark some ideas or anything like that. So I'm gonna color in these flowers in the corner while I 
finish up. Yeah, thank you for watching. This is probably going to be a bit of a longer video, which according to you guys, you don't really mind, but you know. <laughs> There's a video on screen now if you're interested, and I'll also leave one up in the iCard for you. And my social media is also on screen now, in case you're ever curious about that. I'm most active on Instagram, so I would recommend following me there. Okay, see ya.